this mirrors focus solar radiation and convert it into steam. And I'm experimentally testing these five types of solar heaters and I want to start testing some more new types. My goal is to find the best type which can convert solar radiation into thermal energy at this cost, half a cent per kilowatt hour. And it is about 5 times cheaper than the cost of heat from coal, and about 10 times cheaper than heat from natural gas. This cheapness of our solar heat allows a turbine to produce electricity so cheap that it wins competition against thermal and nuclear power plants. In other words, our solar heaters should be used instead of these mirror structures, which are approximately 10 times more expensive than our cheap heaters. These mirror structures are the basis of more than a hundred of solar power plants with a total cost of about 40 billion dollars. And now I will quickly remind you how these mirrors convert solar radiation into electricity. When the sun appears, its radiation heats thermal oil inside these tubes to temperatures of almost 400 degrees. This hot oil moves to the center of the solar plant, where a proportion of its thermal energy produces steam for a turbine that generates electricity. The rest of the thermal energy of the oil comes to such heat storages, where the energy heats up several tens of thousand tons of molten salt. A few hours later, in the evening or at night, this hot molten salt will produce steam for the same turbine. Let's turn our attention to similar heat storages, and they are filled with this salt which is liquid at a temperature of more than 220 degrees Celsius. Usually a heat storage consists of two tanks for liquid salt, and this tank stores hot salt. And the second tank holds cold liquid salt. The movement of the liquid salt between the tanks takes place through heat exchangers, where the salt transfers its thermal energy to generate steam for a turbine, or the liquid salt takes thermal energy from the oil, which is heated by those solar heaters. About a hundred of these pairs of molten salt tanks have already been built at solar power plants of various types in various countries. But unfortunately, molten salt is very expensive, and this formula tells us that this molten salt storage parameters noticeably increase the cost of our electricity, despite the fact that here we use very cheap thermal energy from our new solar heaters. That is why now my video will describe other types of heat storages, which will allow us to produce very cheap solar electricity, both day and night. Usually opponents of molten salt tell us about this solar power plant, where accidents and disadvantages of this molten salt heat storage were the beginning of a financial disaster for one billion dollar investment. So, let's look at other types of heat storages, which are dozens of times cheaper and safer than molten salt. This heat storage consists of a large number of long cylinders of concrete around pipes. It is obvious that if hot thermal oil circulates through those pipes, it transfers its thermal energy to the concrete. As a result, the concrete is heated to high temperatures, up to 400 degrees Celsius. We can take this thermal energy from the concrete also through the circulation of thermal oil through the same pipes. This was an example from a Norwegian company of this name, which started building concrete heat storages a few years ago, and recently it received a big investment. But now I am starting to show other examples. This is a German heat storage from a large mass of concrete with a large number of pipes for the circulation of thermal oil. Now I am showing another example from one of the American companies, and their heat storage consists of concrete parallel pipes with pipes. Similar examples may be of interest to us if they correspond to this formula, especially to this total construction cost, which should be on the order of several hundred dollars per ton of concrete. We see that the concrete heat storage drastically reduces this cost of our solar electricity by reducing this value compared to the previous formula for heat storage with molten salt, although this efficiency has become worse. The next type of heat storage is trying to connect with solar power plants of this type, where a large number of these mirrors focus solar radiation at the top of a tower. 
Here the focused solar radiation heats air to temperatures of almost 1000 degrees Celsius and the hot air circulates through this tank which is filled with gravel. It is obvious that the hot air heats up the gravel and we can check the thermal energy to generate electricity by circulating the air between the tank and a turbine. It was an idea from an American startup with this name, but now I am showing another example from Denmark. Tank of the heat storage is filled with these basalt stones, which can be heated by hot air up to 600 degrees Celsius. This is the next example from Germany, and now the Germans are showing how the air moves through a mass of small stones. This is another example where the mirrors heat air to 600 degrees Celsius, which circulates through this heat storage with stones approximately 3 cm in size. Now I am showing how the heat storage was built by one of the Swiss startups. I remind you that our mirrors should heat the thermal oil, not air. Therefore, the first option is to add a heat exchanger, which transports thermal energy between the thermal oil and the air that circulates through the stones of our heat storage. The second option does not require any heat exchanger, and this is an example from American scientists, which was described in this my old video five months ago. Their heat storage is this long pit, which is filled with gravel or crashed stone. Here they create a rain of the thermal oil, and its drops move through the stones, exchange thermal energy with them, and accumulate in this oil lake, which is pumped out by a pump. So, these cheap materials for our heat storage allow us to significantly increase its volume. And therefore it can provide thermal energy not only for the coming night, but also for several non-solar days in a row, according to this formula. Therefore here we see that we now store thermal energy for 60 hours of operation of our turbines, compared to 8 hours of the operation in the previous formulas. Also this fact improves this capacity factor, but degrades this efficiency. The first example is an idea from one of the American startups, where this mirror creates thermal energy of almost a thousand degrees Celsius, which accumulates in this heat storage that is filled with ceramic pellets or other cheap material. This is another example in Serbia, where this mirror system heats up this heat storage to a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius. I may be wrong, but it seems to me that the heat storage is filled with blocks of cast basalt with passages for the circulation of heat carrier. Of course, we can find other cheap materials for our heat storage, and for example here German scientists propose to use metallurgical slug. But we have to check similar materials to see if they meet these formulas, which require the production of cheap solar electricity 5 cents per kilowatt hour for 8 or 60 non-solar hours. Today many people are watching with interest the project of these young people who built similar heat storages with ordinary sand through a Finnish startup with this name. For example, this heat storage will be filled with 100 tons of sand, which can be heated up to 600 degrees Celsius. But experiments of these Arabic scientists claim that ordinary sand stores thermal energy well up to temperatures of 1000 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the experiments of these American scientists indicate even higher temperatures, and they plan to prove this fact through the construction of these large heat storages with sand, which will be heated to 1200 degrees. But let's get back to this Finnish heat storage, and their sand mass has a similar pipe. The circulation of hot air through this pipe is accompanied by the exchange of thermal energy between the air and the sand mass. It is obvious that the pipes of our heat storage should be thinner, because we use thermal oil, not air. Let's look at alternatives to these pipes at other methods of heat exchange between sand and heat carrier, and this is one of the examples. We see that the sand is moved by mechanical elevators, and here the sand goes around the pipes inside which the heat carrier circulates. 
We saw that the Americans are also planning to use hot sand elevators for this project, the construction of which I have already spoken about. It is interesting that air can go through a mass of sand similar to this experiment, and this movement of the air is accompanied by the exchange of thermal energy between the sand and air. It is also interesting that such sand acquires the properties of a liquid. The sand behaves like water. Similar liquid sand is used in this Italian heat storage, where 270 tons of sand are heated to 600 degrees Celsius, and maybe these pipes are used to take thermal energy from the moving sand. I also remind you that any of the sand heat storages will suit us only if it matches this formula, especially this total construction cost of our heat storage. Let's look for materials that are even cheaper than sand. First, the cheaper option is ordinary soil. Secondly, it can be mining waste and waste from various plants and factories. The use of soil or waste can lead us to very large heat storages, which will be heated during solar summer and store the thermal energy for several months until winter. So, our solar power plants can be independent of the seasons, and they can work just as well in non-solar winters as they do in summer. This formula is an example of how the transfer of thermal energy from summer to winter can be economically feasible and can provide this cheap electricity thanks to the radical improvement of this capacity factor. Large heat storages for the transfer of heat from summer to winter will be the topic of one of my future videos.